Vice Chancellor. Pro Vice Chancellor. Members of the university, graduates, graduands, honoured guests. Since 1995, Ian Morris has been the Jean and Rebecca Willard Professor of Classics and Professor of History in the Department of Classics at Stanford University. He took his BA at this university in 1981 and his PhD in Cambridge in 1986, where he held a research fellowship at Jesus College. His, pre his prestigious fellowships and awards have included awards from the Guggenheim Foundation, the National Endowment for the Humanities in the United States, and many other bodies. His primary research, represented by monographs on the culture of Greece in, in classical antiquity and the Iron Age, has been informed by extensive archaeological fieldwork. I should add that his links with this region, the West Midlands, include his having participated early in his career in the digging up of significant bits of round here as an assistant on excavations by the Stafton Mid-Staffordshire Archaeological Society, the City of Stoke-on-Trent Museum, and West Midlands Rescue Archaeology. One assumes that the bits have been put back. <laughs> He's perhaps best known to a wider readership for why the West rules for now, the patterns of history and what they reveal about the future, published in 2010. In a sense, as its title suggests, this is developed and complemented by a subsequent study in methodology, the measure of civilization, how social development decides the fate of nations. The English 18th century poet wrote, let observation with extensive view survey mankind from China to Peru. Ian Morris's extensive view and observation have been exemplary and his surveying of mankind and its history is both stimulating and salutary and enormously entertaining. Why the West Rules for Now is a work of extraordinary scope, clarity and persuasiveness. The question implied, indeed insisted on, is an exceptionally demanding one. As Professor Morris acknowledges at the outset, it requires us to look at the whole sweep of human history as a single story, establishing its overall shape before discussing why it has that shape. The reader is offered what he wryly describes as the Morris theorem, as a one-sentence summary of the causes of social change, adapted from the science fiction writer Robert Heinlein. Change, and I quote, change is caused by lazy, greedy, frightened people looking for easier, more profitable and safer ways to do things, and they rarely know what they're doing. Nothing, of course, could be further from the characteristics of the holders of a Birmingham degree. <laughs> Eager as we are to live up to the university's motto, written on the ceiling, but don't look now, per ardua ad alta, through striving to the heights. One of you is looking at least. But as a provocative and effective tool for analysing change over the recorded and the unrecorded millennia, or the rediscovered millennia, it has enormous advantages, as Professor Morris's work shows. I shan't attempt to summarise the chapters in which, with wit, acuity and narrative power, he pursues the argument of his book. Along the way, it constitutes a history of the means by which historians, anthropologists and archaeologists have striven to take the measure of the past, a history of histories, of historiography, as well as a history in its own right. The ways in which they've related their own work and he, the way in which he understands it in terms of their philosophical and ideological circumstances and imperatives of their own times and places. Assumptions about the identities of West and East beyond the obvious geographical definitions dictated somewhat by the position of the sun, and the primacy of one over the other are challenged with exactly the kind of breadth combined with detail that make for an exciting, engrossing, and at the same time intellectually scrupulous exposition. In this, Professor Morris follows another maxim that he quotes, Alfred Einstein's rule that in science, things should be made as simple as possible, but no simpler. And what do the patterns of history reveal about the future? Why the West Rules for Now is a game-changing book. It's also something of a cliffhanger. 
And I have no intention of uttering a spoiler. You really do have to read to the end of it. Although I may have been quoting from the early pages, I'd like to reassure Professor Morris I have reached the end of it. <laughs> On the principle of that I once used writing an undergraduate essay about the beginning and the end of Shakespeare's Macbeth because I've forgotten to read the middle. <laughs> However, I've grown out of that. But I should add, if I'm not going to issue a spoiler, that there is at least hope. It has nothing to do with somehow rescuing the supremacy of either East or West. It's giving little away to say that Professor Morris ends on a note of qualified optimism. In the words of my colleague, Dr. Diana Spencer, he is increasingly renowned for delivering groundbreaking solutions to big questions driving historical process. Ian Morris has established himself as a public intellectual in the United States, a category that implies contribution to debates on public policy alongside his presence in the media as well as in academic life. He has given valuable support to this university's new department of classics, ancient history and archaeology in its strategies of research and public engagement, not least by his advocacy of the discipline and its significance in shaping the views of the world we live in and the world we want to live in with reference to the worlds that we have lived in. Vice-Chancellor, to you and to the university, I present Ian, Ian Morris for the degree of Doctor of Letters, Honoris Causa. By virtue of my authority as Vice-Chancellor, and with great pleasure, Ian, I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Letters, Honoris Causa. Ian, thanks very much for accepting. Many Thank congratulations. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Vice-Chancellor, uh, uh, pro-Vice-Chancellor, um, graduates, graduands and guests. Well, it's a huge honour um, to be here this morning. Uh, to, receiving an honorary degree is uh, the, the biggest honour you get in academic life. So it's wonderful to have this honour and it was wonderful to hear those kind words said about me. Um, and it's just, it's great to be here. Um, the last time I was here was almost exactly one third of a century ago. This dawned on me uh, as I was getting on the plane to come here. It's another frightening length of time. But I was here, like several of you this morning, to receive um, my, my BA in Ancient History and Archaeology, uh, which I, I was here from 1978 to 1981. Um, and it was a, a unique program. There's nothing quite like that degree program in the whole country at that point. And it's geographical scale and it's emphasis emphasis on archaeological field work and actually going out there and doing archaeology. It's a wonderful program. And I had a great time here as a student. And it's great to see, um, well, not, not the department anymore, the school now, the School of Classics, Ancient History and Archaeology, um, continuing to flourish. Uh, some of the same people who taught me when I was here are still here teaching, still doing a wonderful job um, teaching students. Lots of new people here as well. And the department, the school seems to keep going from success to success. Oh, I have to admit, when I was here, I was not exactly a star student in the department for most of my time here. When I came here, I was an 18-year-old um, young man. And like, my, my mind worked like the mind of most 18-year-old young men. And um, studying my books was not the, the top goal uh, in my days, most days. I, what I really wanted to do was be a heavy metal guitarist. And Birmingham, of course, was the global center for heavy metal guitarists, as I'm sure many of you will know. Uh, so I, I've, wor I've worked very hard at being a heavy metal guitarist for a while. But then, um, I guess, at the, at the beginning of my third year, my senior year here, I woke up one day and realized, you know, I'm not really going to be a heavy metal guitarist. I have to face reality here. And uh, the, the people in the Department of Ancient History and Archaeology actually have a, uh, I owe them a great debt of thanks for helping me grow up a little bit and wake up. And um, so I, I uh, realized in my senior year here just how much I liked archaeology and ancient history and just what fun it is. And one of the best things about the program in those days was that they would send us all off uh, to go and visit the countries that we studied. So I got sent off to Greece and Italy for several weeks, and I just thought this was fantastic. I thought, wow, if you get to spend your time getting paid to do this stuff, what could really be better than that? So I came back to Birmingham, uh, I got my degree, and um, I, I decided I was going to do a PhD in, in classical archaeology with the encouragement of members of the department here. I thought this will be a great thing to do. 
And so, like um, most people who start PhDs in fields like this, I, I defined a topic I was going to work on and started on it and realised, you know, there are about three people on the entire planet who think this subject is even slightly interesting, the thing that I'm working on. And it turned out that two of the three were at Cambridge University. So, again, with the department's encouragement, they thought, you know, you, you should go over there. You, you should go away to those people. So I did, and I went off and I got my PhD and moved off to America and did all kinds of things. But now, finally, after 33 years, I am finally getting my PhD from Birmingham University. So this feels very good, although I suspect the university may not be so, quite so thrilled about it. I'm a, I'm a university administrator's worst nightmare. Because one of the things people outside the university look at very hard is what is the average time to degree of your graduate students? <laughs> and I, I am not helping anybody here. But on, look at it from the other point of view. It's the university's own fault. Because uh, I, I wouldn't be here without the education and the opportunities that Birmingham University has given me. So again, I'd just like to say what a, a great honour um, this is is uh, for me and uh, to thank the university for this degree. Oh, thank you.